Java Thread select your program do multiple things at once, like handling a user request while reading from a database or logging to a file, all in parallel. They are the foundation of concurrency in Java. And if you are building backend systems, such as web servers or any application that handles many tasks at the same time, understanding how threads work is essential. It helps you write faster, more scalable software and avoid hidden performance issues like thread leaks or bottlenecks. In this video, I'll break down how Java threads actually work, how virtual threads are changing the game and what every engineer should know to build high concurrency apps with confidence. Let's get started. In traditional Java, each time new thread is called, it gets mapped directly to an operating system thread. This type is called a platform thread. Now here's the problem. Platform threads are heavy. They consume a significant amount of memory, often around 1 MB per thread, and they are managed by the operating system scheduler. So when you run this, you'll see output like this. This approach is fine when you're dealing with a small number of tasks. But if you try to spin up thousands of threads like this, let's say one for each incoming HTTP request, you are asking the OS to manage 1000 separate execution contexts. That's not just inefficient, it can cause real performance issues. You start hitting limits. Memory gets exhausted, context switching becomes expensive, and debugging becomes harder as thread count grows. Platform threads work well in small number or for CPU bound tasks but they simply don't scale for high concurrency workloads, especially IO heavy ones like serving thousands of web requests. With virtual threads, you can create thousands, even millions of threads without overloading your system because they are managed by the JVM, not the operating system. And here is the same example rewritten using virtual threads. Just replace new of thread with thread.start virtual thread. That's it. Under the hood, these threads are extremely lightweight. They share a small pool of actual OS threads and the JVM handles all the scheduling. If your virtual thread blocks, say waiting for IO, it simply yields control without blocking a real thread. And that's the magic of virtual threads. Massive concurrency, minimal overhead, simple readable code, and no async callbacks needed. So here at the top, we have multiple virtual threads. These are lightweight tasks created by the application. Notice how they are not directly connected to OS threads. Instead, they are managed by the JVM scheduler, right here in the middle. So when a virtual thread is ready to run, it gets mounted on a platform thread, which is shown in the blue below. Now, mounting means it temporarily borrows a platform thread to do its work. This red label shows that the virtual thread is currently active. It's running on a platform thread. Now here is the key. If this virtual thread makes a blocking call, like reading from a database or waiting on a socket, the JVM unmounts it from the platform thread. The platform thread is now free to pick up another runnable virtual thread. Meanwhile, the paused virtual thread just waits without consuming any OS thread or system resource. Later, when the blocking operation completes, the JVM remounts the virtual thread on any available platform thread and it resumes where it left off. This is how you can run millions of concurrent tasks using just a small fixed number of platform threads with no thread pool tuning or async boilerplate. Below the platform threads, we have the actual OS thread. These are the threads managed by our operating system, be it Linux, Mac OS, Windows, doesn't matter. Each platform thread is backed by one of these OS threads. But here is the important part. The JVM scheduler shown in the middle is the one in charge of scheduling virtual threads. Deciding which virtual thread runs on which platform thread and when. The operating system isn't even aware that virtual threads exist. As far as it's concerned, it's only juggling few OS threads. Linux, Mac OS, Windows, doesn't matter. Meanwhile, the JVM is doing all the heavy lifting, swapping virtual threads in and out as needed, managing blocking and handling execution flow. So while your OS is managing a handful of heavyweight threads, the JVM is spinning thousands of lightweight virtual threads on top. This separation of concerns allows Java to scale massively while still keeping your code simple and readable. This model is game changing for IO bound tasks. Think web servers, chat apps, or batch jobs. For example, a web server handling thousands of concurrent HTTP requests. 
In a traditional setup, you'd use a fixed size thread pool with platform threads. If you had 500 threads in the pool, you could only serve 500 requests at a time. Any more than that, and users start waiting. Or worse, requests get dropped. With virtual threads, this limitation disappears. You can spawn a virtual thread for every incoming request. No pulling, no async callbacks, just plain Java code. Each virtual thread handles one request, reads the input, talks to the database, writes the response. And when it's waiting for IO or database response, it unmounts freeing up platform threads for others. This means your server can now handle tens or hundreds of thousands of concurrent requests with no extra tuning. This changes the game for frameworks like Spring Boot, which can now use synchronous code without sacrificing scalability. While virtual threads are powerful, they are not a silver bullet. Virtual threads shine when your tasks are IO bound, like handling HTTP requests, file reads, or database queries. But if your threads are doing intensive computation, like image processing or data crunching, virtual threads offer little benefit over platform threads. They'll still consume CPU and the JVM cannot unmount them mid computation. And since virtual threads get mounted and unmounted frequently, using thread local for request specific data can lead to subtle bugs. If your logic depends on thread identity or state being preserved across execution, test carefully. And don't mix virtual and platform threads unless you know what you're doing. For example, using blocking calls on platform threads while virtual threads are also in play could result in poor performance. Best practice, use virtual threads when you need to scale to thousands or millions of concurrent tasks, especially IO heavy workloads. But don't throw them at CPU bound loops expecting a miracle. Think of it like this. Switching from platform threads to virtual threads is like moving from bare metal servers to cloud VMs. More flexible, more scalable, and you pay less for the same output. You could compare this to the shift from synchronous REST calls to event-driven models like Kafka or gRPC. It's about handling more with less. Java's thread modeling has taken a huge leap forward with virtual threads. You now get the scalability of asynchronous systems without the complexity of async code. So next time you are spinning up threads in Java, ask yourself, do I really need an OS thread for this? Or can a lightweight virtual thread do the job better? If this helped clarifying things, give the video a like, subscribe for more deep dives into system design and distributed systems. And if you have already used virtual threads in production, share your experience in the comments. Until next time, keep your threads light and your CPU happy.